Hello everybody and welcome to another video with Gaming Up With The Joneses. Today we're doing our top 15 most overrated games of all time. I'm Michael. And I'm Janella. And we're Gaming Up With The Joneses. So last time, last year I did this list by myself and the comments were awesome. So bash us in the comments if you disagree because that was really oh fun boy. talking to you guys last time. <laughs> but uh, I... Did it my way again, but a little bit of your guys' way that you were saying. So one change that I did is all of these games have to be in the top 300 on Board, board Game Geek. Uh, last year I had a couple that were like 700 and stuff, and your guys like, that's not overrated enough. And so I'm like, all right, fine. So top 300, I think my worst one is 2... 260, no, that one didn't make it. 298 so 298 and lower and, and for me the way that i did my list was um just like everybody has their own opinions these are games that i thought i would enjoy but ended up not being as hyped up as i thought it would be so that's how i did my list <laughs> all right uh janella will start us off so my number 15 is a game that you enjoy but um, I actually, the reason why it's number 15 is because I need to give it another shot before I 100% decide, but it's up here. So it is Targi. Really? I thought you said you liked it last time. <laughs> not, really? still not as much, but yeah, the very first time I played this game, <laughs> the, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. So if you're a Targi fan, let me know why you like it and maybe I'll give it another shot. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> All right, my number 15 is the cat game Calico, and I, it's still on my overrated list, just barely now, because it's barely overrated, but uh, <laughs> I give it a 6 out of a 10, and uh, the board game geek people give it like a 7.2, and I just think that's too high. I think it's an okay game, because this game makes you feel like you're frustrated the whole time you're playing it, and it, it makes you feel claustrophobic, because the whole thing just closes in on you as you're playing. You're like, well, I can't do that anymore. Well, I can't do it anymore. And then the last thing that pops up, you're like, well, I have to put it here. <laughs> so it's like the opposite of Cascadia. So I like Cascadia. I like the idea of Calico, but I think it's overrated. Okay. My number 14 is a game that I just had to include in here because it needs to be bashed. So my number 14 <laughs> is Monopoly. Oh. <laughs> So you guys know there's a monopoly for every single different theme. It takes up way too much of the shelf space for different board games that I think deserve to be in this in their spot. So yeah, that's it. Monopoly number 14. Oh, that's true for the whole public <laughs> opinion. It's not rated too good or too bad on Board Game Geek, but... I don't count any of those old school Milton Bradley Hasbro games because my whole list would be that only. <laughs> so I had to throw one in there. And it's the yeah. OG one that I think a lot of people are super familiar Everybody's with. Everybody's going to agree. <laughs> I'm the one going to be making people mad. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Ooh, this one's good. My number 14 is new this time because I think last time I did it I don't think I played this game yet. I played this for the first time at the World Series of Board Gaming last year and won the game, but I dominated the entire thing. And then the way the end game scoring happens, I only won by one point. Oh, and I know. it made me so mad <laughs> that I only won by one point because I was making all the good decisions. And that is the Red Cathedral. In the Red Cathedral, you get like crosses for points later on the track and you jump points to the crosses and it gives like you them for everything and so the people that made like a ton of mistakes somehow got a ton more points at the end and I was like what the and so it bothered me a lot <laughs> but uh I ended up winning the game but only by one point and so that bothered me but really that's it for the red cathedral I would agree with it I give it a six out of ten and uh, Board Game Geek gives it 7.3. I would agree that it's a 7.3 game if the scoring was not weird. Because the gameplay is really fun. <laughs> but the scoring at the end made me kind of crazy. So that's my number 14, The Red Cathedral. Okay, so my number 13, I actually didn't realize, is another one that I wanted to bash too. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's another like the public really really enjoys that I think majority of households probably own this game that it just there's better games to it and it is cards against humanity (laughs) (laughs) so you guys know it's just like a hyped up version of apples to apples but dirty version uh there really isn't more substance to that game other than that and once you play it more than two three times you know what are what cards are going to show up so there really isn't a reason to keep playing it that's all there is to it out of my like 290 (laughs) games i rate it's probably like 280th or worse somewhere around there. Oh boy. So yeah, that's my number 13, Cards Against Humanity. Yeah, that game's terrible. <laughs> it makes you think that it's going to be fun because it's funny the first time you play and then after mm-hmm. that you know all the cards and it's boring and it's one of those stupid judge yeah. makes the decision games. I don't like those. <clears throat> but uh, my number 13, I also rate, okay, this one isn't fair because we haven't played it again. I need to give it another chance. So... <laughs> Um, this is Cosmic Encounter, Ooh. and so it looks like it's it's a 7.3 on BGG. I give it a 6, and it might be the people we played with because this is a negotiation type of game, and we really need to give this one another chance, but as of that play that I did, I think it's overrated. It was okay, but it wasn't, like, too fun, <laughs> I guess. It, it had its parts, I guess. Yeah. So. This almost made my list, actually. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. But that's my number 13, Cosmic Encounter. Nice. Okay. My number 12 is a game similar to the talk that we said about Cards Against Humanity that um, it's really, like, fun the first couple times, but then after that it just, I, well, at least I think, um, it's just, it wasn't very fun afterwards. And this is Munchkin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we had, this is like one of our very first owned games too. And we had a lot of fun. We played with a lot of people. And then that it just got one of those games where if you're the win, <laughs> if you're winning, if you're ahead, everybody's just going to attack you right off the bat for like every move until you're down. And then whoever gets up there again, um, they get attacked. So I don't know. I don't really like this game um because of that it's just and i don't think (laughs) we bought another copy i don't even remember cthulhu and it hasn't even been opened (laughs) we opened i opened it but we never okay you did open it it sat unopened for a really long time (laughs) so yeah that is my number 12 munchkin yeah that one makes sense that game like feels so fun when you first get into Mm -hmm. board games and then later on i swear everybody goes through this because if you talk to other people that play board games a lot they always said that was one of the first ones that i liked it and now i can't stand the game because it's one of those games where everybody just gains up on who's winning yeah and so because of that it makes you feel like you have decisions but it's just 100 percent luck if you're playing at trying to mess up the leaders i guess (laughs) i don't know but uh all right, my number 12 is Magic the Gathering, the card game. Ooh, saucy. Uh, yeah, it's 163 on BGG for some reason. Uh, <laughs> That's it's crazy to me. Another 7 point, 7.3. Um, I give it a 6 also. I think it's okay. I think what hurts this game more, because I like the gameplay, it's the, if you're new to it and you just get like a starter set and these guys spend like $600 on a deck... <laughs> Yeah. You're going to get crushed and it's not even fun. It's it's a pay to win game. And people are going to com- argue and say it's not, but it is. It really yeah. is cuz yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> it tells you that cuz when we did the tournament for like the starter set, we actually won a few games, but then whenever we played against other people like you said that could build your own deck and they know everything and every single little thing, it's just not fun. <laughs> I'm starting to think I thought I would like trading card games but i'm starting to think that they're just not my style Hmm. but uh yeah that was my number 12 magic the gathering nice my number 11 is a game that was very controversial in the last video Uh (laughs) um that a lot of people enjoy but we are just not a fan of it's one of two games it is nemesis (laughs) (laughs) um and it's lower on my list just because um I'm not super into the theme either, but expected a little bit more out of the game. Um, but yeah, it 
<laughs> you probably all heard it if you don't really like this game, but to even explain the rules, um, it takes way too long. <laughs> and then when you do play the game like you've had, there's a possibility that on your second turn you can be wiped out. You so. can actually die on your first turn. <laughs> your first I got turn lucky even. that I didn't die on my first turn and died <laughs> on the second one. So, <laughs> yeah, and who wants to play a game where you get taken out? so fast like that player so. elimination ruins that game and then i don't really like as much to the fact that when we did get to the end on the other game that we played you were able to win your objective because you backstabbed us after being on the same team same like <laughs> theme throughout the whole game that part was fun <laughs> for him everybody <laughs> didn't even talk to me after that because i was in a tournament <laughs> yeah that's how you got your golden ticket <laughs> But yeah, that's my number 11, Nemesis. My number 11 is an interesting one because everybody says this version is better than the main version. And I just, I played it four times now and I, three or four, somewhere around there. And I just don't see how this is more fun than the original. And this is Ticket to Ride Europe. Oh. The Europe version of Ticket to Ride, you got, like, it's a lot more cla claustrophobic. I guess I just hate being stuck to stuff because calico is on my list but um <laughs> you do get a train stations that you can add but a lot of people are confused on even how those work i'm not even 100 percent sure after being explained and reading it multiple times and stuff it still doesn't make complete sense to me on how that works but i guess you can use one person's route once in order to make your route so you can like rent their train or something um and then those are worth points at the end so you don't want to use them if if you don't have to because then you get bonus points for that so it makes it more of a route game instead of building the big trains like in the original version it's basically whoever makes all the six trains is going to win instead of whoever mm -hmm. gets the big routes and in uh, europe it seems like it's way more about routes because well there is one eight eight long train but uh I don't know. I just don't see why people think it's better. I give it a six because I give regular Ticket to Ride a seven. So hmm. that's my number 11, Ticket to Ride Europe. All right. So now into the top 10. Mm -hmm. So my number 10 is actually a game that we thought we would really enjoy. We one of Another game that was like one of our very first games that we got. Um, but did, nope. Just failed. <laughs> <laughs> this is Betrayal. I can't even say the name correctly. At House Betrayal on the Hill. Betrayal at House on the Hill. Like, even the name just doesn't make sense. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> this game, every time we've played it, the very first, um, whoever's first time it is playing it ends up being the one that has to do the haunt. See, it's been so long we thought we played it. There. And they have to go read the rules. And then when you're <laughs> reading the rules, whoever's actually doing it on the cooperative team is figuring out how to play while everybody else ain't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, yeah. I don't it like had, like, thing. a good start because you're like, ooh, we get to explore and all the things. Exploring but, is so fun. But then <laughs> then it just dies after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my number 10, Betrayal. Betrayal, just put that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my number 10 is, I give a 6 out of 10. It's 7.4 on BGG. And it's only because of the scoring, and that is Just One. Oh, no! <laughs> just One is actually really fun gameplay-wise, <laughs> but I hate games that are like, ooh, if you do this much, then you get this many oh. points, and you're awesome, or you hit excellent, or you did okay, but you need to improve. Or I hate that. Just tell me if I win the game or lose. Don't tell me I get this score and you try to beat it. I just I can't stand that. Because <laughs> you do. I think you do 13, so it should be like if you hit 8, you win or something instead of the weird scoring thing that I don't like. But the gameplay is really fun. Mm -hmm. When you get the same word as somebody else, then it just makes everybody like, oh, no. And everybody wants to slap both of you. And... <laughs> That's my number 10, just one. Okay, my number nine. And we're starting to get into games that I actually thought I would really enjoy. Um, like I said, kind of how my list went, but then just was like overhyped. So that's why it's on my list. Um, and mm. this act this game actually won an award. Um, this is Micro Macro Crime City. Um, Ooh. 
this game I like love crime stuff like the where's Waldo aspect was really cool but tell me why <laughs> the board is a literal sheet of paper <laughs> like come on you couldn't do like an actual something like a little bit even just a teensy bit thicker I don't know that just disappointed and then and then after that we've only played it like two times and because it's just hard to when there's all the creases because you have to fold the piece of paper because it's a pretty large piece of paper you have to fold it and because it's paper it the more times you fold it it starts like the crease starts drying out the ink I don't know it's just a lot of stuff that it's just like why did you pick that and that was the biggest piece that's like um made it to be where it's at because otherwise I think this could be a really really good game for me but Hmm. overrated because that piece affects the gameplay i feel so i think that game's also overpriced <laughs> you get a piece of paper and a deck of cards and it's like 30 dollars. <laughs> yeah. at least give us a board for 30 dollars. <laughs> yep so telling telling you how we really feel <laughs> that's my number nine micro macro crime city my number nine i need to play again because i like the designer reiner knizia Oh. But uh, I give it a 6 while it is a uh, 7.4 on uh, BGG. And this is The Quest for El Dorado. I haven't played that one yet. And The Quest of El Dorado is a deck building game, racing game. And I think the only issue is, and I, from what I've talked to, people say they all make this mistake their first time playing it, is you keep deck building and you need to stop halfway through. You need to stop deck building and just worry about running through the race as fast as you can. But it feels good to keep buying stuff and building your deck <laughs> and so all the new people always do that and so the experienced people always dominate and that kind of ruins it i think it would be good if everybody knew what they were doing so it's like when you got to play a couple times probably and that's probably my issue is i haven't played it again so that is my number nine it's 121 on on the thing so a lot of people like it but that's the quest for el dorado my number eight is our very first crossover. Really? Take a guess. I want to see what you think. Let's see. Uh, you <laughs> haven't played a lot of these. Yeah, so it cuts down. <laughs> Calico? Uh-uh. Magic the Gathering. So, oh, yeah, you like Calico, I think. So this is, <laughs> <laughs> like Michael said, this is a game that we um, really wanted to really like just because most of the time it's just us two playing um, but we didn't really want to engage into having to purchase all the different pre-releases and everything, just because I feel like, to, like we said before, to be able to <laughs> compete or even have fun, you would have to spend Extra a money. crazy amount of money. So, yeah. And time researching. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's my number eight, Magic the Gathering. We'd rather spend our time and money on more games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was number eight, right? Uh-huh. Uh, my number eight, I give a seven out of ten, so I do like this game. Uh, my issue with it is it takes a little bit too long, and I just don't care for cooperative games that much, I guess. And this is Spirit Island. Ooh, and Spirit Island saucy. is 8.1, and it is the 11th game of all time on BGG, oh, and I man. just had to add it to my list because it's not the 11th best game. I just don't <laughs> think so. Does it belong in the top 100? Maybe you can argue that. I wouldn't put it... Well, I might put it in mine. I can't remember. I guess we'll have to see. If it does make my top 100, it's going to be near the, the like 90th or something. But, uh, Interesting. I do, I do like the game. It's fun to play. It's just, I guess it's cooperative stuff. Because you have to rely on other people. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. That's my number eight. And it's really hard. It's really hard, too. And you feel, another thing, not really claustrophobic, but you feel like you're struggling even when you're winning and you don't realize it until the end. You're like, oh, I'm losing here and I'm losing here. And then somehow you, like, do a perfect combo and kill everything. And you're like, what the... How did I do that? So, yeah, that's my number eight, Spirit Island. Nice. <laughs> my number seven is a game that I actually really enjoyed. And then we went to the World Series of Board Game and it died. 
because it was just, I don't know if it was just because of the way that they had the rules set up or just because you got to advance if somebody didn't show up. I don't know. I Like I said, I think the World Series of Board Gaming just ruined this game for me <laughs> um, because, yeah. And it is patchwork. patchwork. <laughs> so I actually, like I said, really enjoy this game, but the way that it was set up and the way that people like over, I don't know what the right word is, like hyped it there. I was like, mm-mm. And like I said, it really made me mad when um, in the tournament, they it's only two players. So um, if I think there ended up being four, maybe only three, but three or four people didn't show up. So on the very, very first round, if uh, your opponent didn't show up, guess what? You got to advance. So yeah, like I said, my personal, just personal things that <laughs> really hurt this game. But um, yeah, that's my number seven, Patchwork. I almost won Cascadia because nobody showed up and then one person did. So we played a two game version of Cascadia and then I lost. <laughs> <laughs> it, Cascadia plays really different. At two, different it's way counts. different. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you have to fight each other more. Uh, mm-hmm. number seven. My number seven is Hive, oh, and we have the pocket edition. But I put the actual Hive because it's the same game and it's mm-hmm. rated in the top. It's two ninety eight. Uh, Hive Pocket's not rated up there, so I decided to put this one up there. Uh, <laughs> it is seven point seven. I give or seven point one. I give it a five. So we're getting into Ooh. a lot more different now, and the reason why is BGG says average, slightly boring, and that's how I feel playing Hive. I feel like it's slightly boring. I would rather play chess or shoot. We played so many more abstract strategy games. Uh, Devon. Oh yeah, those um, ones were fun. Yinch. Any of those, I'd rather play more than Hive. Now, Devon is one I actually liked a lot. We played that at Dice Tower West, and that was a fun one. So, mm. yeah, my number seven, Hive Pocket, or just Hive, or whatever. Nice. My number six is another crossover that you just had mentioned wouldn't be on my list, but it is Calico. Oh, wow. It's <laughs> higher on your list than mine. Yes, because I, like you said, Cascadia is one of my top games. So I felt like I had to put it higher because um, they're similar. But like you said, Cascadia is just over the top better. <laughs> yeah. So I like the theme because cats, you know, you're quilting, especially being... Maybe controversial, but being a female, we like that type of stuff more with the cats and things. But, um, like he said, the biggest thing that's kind of difficult is you're kind of stuck on the board. You once you um, meet meet your obje- objectives, or if you can't meet your objectives, you're just kind of stuck placing whatever shows up, and then you're just stuck. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Cascadia. You have it open so you can really kind of decide which, which how you want to navigate you can your board. change. You can change mm-hmm. your strategy in Cascadia if your stuff don't show up. In Calico, right. you have to have your stuff show up and then it doesn't. And you only have three to choose from instead of <laughs> yeah. four. And yeah. I think to make that one better, they got to give you like five choices or something. Because yeah, whatever only you two. need never comes up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is my number six, Calico. This is where I'm going to start getting on people's nerves. My number six, I give a five out of ten, and it is a 7.1, ranked 287. This is King Domino. Interesting. And King Domino, I just, I don't, I don't get it, I guess. I like Bruno Catala, because we just played <laughs> Sea Salt and Paper, and uh, we like that game. But I don't know what it is about King Domino. It's just, it feels too lucky, I guess, even though... You don't think it is, but you have no idea if you want to go first or not the next round because you don't know what's coming up yet. And so I think that's what hurts it the most is you can be like, all right, I'll get this cheap thing so that I can go first next time. And then going first doesn't matter because nothing good shows up. It's kind of like kind of like Calico a little bit feeling like that. Mm-hmm. And same thing. You're you're stuck to you're, you're trying to get a five by five grid. So mm-hmm. 
you run out of room in more and more places as you play instead of it getting bigger you're running out of room to put stuff and you're like oh if i would have put this here instead later on oh i don't like that it makes me mad (laughs) so uh that's my number six king domino oh man okay so my number five is um a game that is our very first game that we own so if you've been watching us you'll know what this game is but um the reason why it's number five is because i've really enjoyed this game but i think it um it just hasn't doesn't have as much replayability as you would hope for um and being completely truthful there's a bunch of legacies that have come out Mm. to help it but um (laughs) but yeah so my number five is pandemic and mind you, this is a theme, and why it's higher up here too is a theme that I really enjoyed, like, you know, like the pandemic, and um, you're trying to coordinate with your teammates to kind of heal, and you go over here, and then I'll go this direction, and you go this direction. And actually, cool. another thing that I think hurt it too is um, playing with another person too. A lot of times, people will go to you to say, "Well, what do you think we should do?" <laughs> That's why I kind of so don't then, like it. So then it's <laughs> just like, uh, like, come on, you gotta, you gotta do your, what you think is gonna be best beneficial, and then hopefully as a co- mm-hmm. cohesive team we can do it. But just like asking, it's kind of eliminates the reason to have an extra player, <laughs> almost. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, that's my number five pandemic. My number five is weird. I give it a 5 out of 10, even though it's a 7.2. It's 242, but I like the other versions of this game. It's Codenames Duet, and a lot of people say Duet's better than regular Codenames. Uh I like the team-on-team against each other because it just seems more competitive. The cooperative version of it just... I I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get why I don't care for it as much. It... We've only done it once, so that could be why too, but Codenames just feels like you need to play it with more than two people. And so the two-player version of it just doesn't play that fun because it's like cooperative where <laughs> you both take turns giving clues and trying to guess. It, it's kind of weird. And I think the only reason why that one even makes this list is because the regular Codenames exists. Because if that one didn't exist and I only played Duet, then I'd be like, all right, this game's fun. But because you have the choice... I'm going to pick regular code names or code names pictures. And so code names duet is overrated in my opinion cuz you don't need 3 of them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my number 5 code names duet. All righty. My number 4 is a game that I really really thought I would enjoy. Um the the theme is similar to like um Werewolf. Um but I guess I just didn't like the weirdness to it and um and it's like i said really the people that actually play it are a little bit a little pushy over it sometimes this is blood on the clock tower (laughs) that's a good one for this (laughs) so this is a good this is a, a a good game that i um Enjoyed the first time, and then after that, it just got creepy, actually. <laughs> uh, or not even the first game, first round. After, like, the first round that we played, it was just like, well, that's, now it's a little creepy. Because you have to, everybody closes their eyes, and whoever the person is has to go around and either tap you or whatever else. And it's just creepy, in my <laughs> opinion. I would, I would prefer just, like, werewolf where you just close your eyes, and then everybody just has, has their their rule werewolf can get creepy actually too but i feel like blood on the clock tower people are a little bit more more a little just a little bit more creepy for some reason <laughs> <laughs> let me know if you agree down below but anyway that's my number four blood on the clock tower this is one that the people this is their favorite game so you're probably oh. gonna get bashed <laughs> It, or bash me down below in the comments. I think people either like it or they think it's okay, and so it averages out at like a 7 or something probably. But yeah, there's some people that this is like the only game they play, and then they, they think it's way better than Werewolf when it's the same thing, except for you get to stay in the game when you're dead. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and it's very, very, very overpriced. 
I I don't understand why it's so expensive because you get little roll cards and you have a book. I don't know if there's anything else, but it seems way overpriced. Well, I think it's because they, whoever the person is, they've over, they overdid it with their their setup. Deluxified it. It's like over a hundred dollars, I think. Yeah. And that's crazy. We have a feast for Odin that was cheaper than a hundred dollars, and that thing has like a thousand pieces. (laughs) I don't know. All right, my number four is a semi crossover, I guess. Uh, semi, what the? I give it a seven out of ten. It is, it is a eight point three. This is the number two game of all time right now. <laughs> it's Pandemic Legacy Season One. Oh, okay. So regular Pandemic didn't quite make my list, but Pandemic Legacy people think this is the best one, <laughs> Season One, and from what I remember, it was more fun than regular Pandemic. But it's it's not the second best game of all time, and you can't replay. You play it once and then, or you play through the thing and then you're done. So yeah. it's like you got that's true twelve to twenty four <laughs> games of it, I guess, which is still a lot because we don't play most games that that's much. True. But the fact that I end up being the person playing by myself because everybody's like, "What should I do?" And I'm like, well, I'm just basically telling you how to do your turn and then doing my turn and then telling you how to do your turn. And I don't like that. I think that's why I don't really care for cooperative games too much. But I think so, because since you're like the alpha of the team. Yeah. Everybody looks to you for advice. It's because I'm competitive. I don't want to lose even (laughs) against the game. Yeah. I still give it a 7 out of 10. I think it's a good game. It's just not the number two best of all time. And even that still somehow isn't even my top overrated game. That's my number four, Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Oof, I don't know if I want to continue to the next one, because these ones are saucy. Okay, um, so my number three is a game that really enjoyed it the first time. I don't actually remember total how many times. I think we played it a good number of times, but I felt like with each time it was just like the trains are overpowered when it doesn't even fit the theme as good. Great Western Trail? <laughs> Great Western Trail is my number three. See, I love the theme because I was like, okay, I have the cows. Ooh, I know all the the different cows that can give me the most points. Like I have had this combo with this combo to go to this combo. And then when you go up to the top, you can, um, I forget what it is, but you have, you have a track on the top that if you get like a good number of cows, you can get like bonuses. And that's what I kept doing. But even that wasn't enough to beat the train route that he did. Cause nobody Cause was... competed against me. So I got every little thing. And I think that was just stupid. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, like I said, I, it was a, it was a fun game at the beginning, but then after like you start playing it some more, like I said, once somebody figures out the train and nobody can compete against that or nobody can, can competes against it with one other person, it's just too overpowered. So it's like a two player game. Like I said, if I was just going my cow route and he's just going the train route every time I feel like. The train route would probably win. Be- just because it's like a lot easier to accomplish, in my opinion. You don't have to get lucky by drawing the right cards. Mm-hmm. When you go for the cow route, you have to draw the right ones at the right time, I think is why. True. The train, you just move but, the train. <laughs> but the cows, you get more points for them. So you'd think that you'd have better luck at that. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so... That's my number three, Great Western Trail. My number three, I give a five out of ten. It's 7.3. A lot of 7.3-ish. So I guess this is kind of the average number. Um, It's 178 on uh, BGG, and it is Japur. Interesting. Japur is one that I promised people in the comments I was going to give it another try, and I haven't yet. So my thoughts have not changed again yet. Um, (laughs) I still think it's overrated. It, uh... It's really just a game of, I I guess you're trying to trade stuff the right time, because if you do it earlier, you get more points for it. But it's really, uh, you have 13 camels, you have 13 camels, you have 13, because you always take the camels when you need to, because yeah. after somebody spends them, then that's all there is. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like you're just 
dealing with a lot of camels in that game. I don't know. It's two players only, and it's not that bad. I just need to give it another shot. But uh, last time we played, I just don't remember it being, like, super fun. So, yeah, that's my number three, Japur. My number two is a game, another crossover, um, that I really thought I would enjoy because it's cooperative. You can play it two players cooperatively. And the theme was like, ooh, this is, sounds really cool. It is Spirit Island. <laughs> <laughs> I really had high, high hopes for this one because, um, like I said, I really en- I, I enjoy cooperative games, but uh, um, also was hoping to have one that only us two could play because that's the majority of Oh, yeah, the most people. of them you have to play. Yeah, mo- majority of them you have to have more than at least two of you. And then I really liked the 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 name, the artwork, the theme sounded amazing. And then we started playing it and it turned into Michael just playing the game by himself because I was like, well, what should I do? Because I don't want to mess this up. What do you think I should do? You're stressed out too much. This yeah. one makes it take longer when you do that. Cause yeah, because all then these... you have to think about, look at all my stuff, mm-hmm. which you probably should. I don't think you're supposed to. I can't remember the rules on that. But that was like our last game that I was just like, just look at all this stuff and tell me because I was like, we need to win. Because I think we can talk, but I don't think you're supposed to show the other person your cards. But um, everybody's like, you can't alpha game. You can't alpha game. All the all the reviews and stuff are like, you can't do that. Yeah, you can because we end up doing that. And yeah. if I play with some of the hardcore people on the computer on it, they do it too. <laughs> but they try not to, so they're like, oh, you should never... <laughs> they, they like, they're like, they so good at it that even if you play bad, they'll still help you win. I don't know. It's crazy. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, like I said, I had really high hopes because cooperative games are one of my top ones. Um, but, unfortunately, it just ended up being one that was too stressful, takes too long, and then... Michael Alpha games it, so <laughs> my number two is Spirit Island. All right, my number two is a crossover. Oh. I give this a four out of ten, so this is my oh, man. worst rated game on this list. It has an average of 7.2, and it's 251. And uh, this game, first of all, I don't think it counts as a game. There's no scoring or anything. Mm-hmm. It's overpriced, like I said earlier. Oh. It's Micro Macro Crime City. And Ew. dang, you rated that low. It, Holy cow. It's, I spy. It's not a game. How did it win the mo- the best board game award when it's not even a game? Like, ah. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, it should be my number one just because it won that award, just to <laughs> even the world out a little bit. <laughs> oh but uh, yeah, it's fun to do as an activity, but it just doesn't feel like a board game. Yeah, the more I think about it, it's also too, like, yes, there's different levels, but it's almost like you just want to do it once, and it's and then the hype's over. Like, once you do it once, it's just, like, Yeah, we did two, done. and the second one wasn't as fun. Like, the first time, it was like, ooh, a new experience, and then the second one we did, it was kind of like, let's uh, get it over with so we can play a real game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I just can't believe it won the spiel that year. But uh, that's my number two, Micro Macro Crime City. I don't want to speak anymore (laughs) because this one's going to make people mad. (laughs) This game, loved the game, absolutely adored the theme. It's an animal themed game, but it's just too lucky. (laughs) And a second version of this game came out and it's just way better. (laughs) This is my number number one. one. (laughs) Yes, because I wanted to get hate. Tid, I guess. <laughs> I told you my list was spicy. <laughs> so my number one. You say it. I don't even want to say it. <laughs> I'm not saying it. You're saying it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. My number one is Wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Just come at me down in the comments. No, to be fair, half the comments are going to agree with you and the other half are going to be like, you should not be allowed to play board games anymore. This is going to be so fun. <laughs> so we went to the World Series of Board Gaming and um, the it was in the hot, Wormspan was in the hot games 
Um, that was a dice tower west. Oh, oh my gosh. See, I'm already getting confused because I'm just so flustered. But anyway, so it was at Dice Tower West. They have, if you've been, they have like the hottest like uh, games room where you can play the new hottest games. And Wormspan was in there, but the, the tables were always so full. So we ended up having to just buy a copy to play it right. So, <laughs> um, but we played Wormspan and it's just so much better as the fact that it like almost eliminates the luck that you find in wingspan Mm -hmm. um like i said i love the theme but i think more often times than not it just kind of comes down to what luck of bird that you get to draw that can magically combo with this and this and this and this (laughs) just right um whereas in wormspan i felt like if you make the correct place where you need it to go it can be saucy so wingspan can be very lucky based on just the dice alone too though because mm-hmm. if can... you play one of those ones early in the game that's like roll the dice to cash if you get one of these then you cash it <clears throat> if you play that early and somehow it works every time you could get like 15 or 20 more points throughout the game or something yeah we've seen and that. or you could get zero yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah so well, and then the because of the luck too from drawing or rolling the dice, if you have like a really good card and you need specific, you always need specific things for it, and that thing never shows up, you're stuck. Like even if it was oh, like an yeah, amazing card, even if it was an amazing card that you wanted to play like your second turn, but then you can't get the food. And food's so hard to get <laughs> that spending two food for one of anything is just too expensive. Yeah. In Wormspan, it's not as bad because you can get food by doing all three actions. Mm-hmm. Like, if you made it far enough on this one and you do this, then you get food. So it's like, oh, nice. I have a prediction to make. I don't think... I think Wormspan hopefully will replace Wingspan at the y, at the World Series of Board Gaming. The Weiss Tower. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm trying to mix both of them now. (laughs) Anyways, so yeah, that is my number one overrated game, Wingspan. Wow. (laughs) Uh, Everybody probably knows what my number one is, because I think it was my number one last year. Uh, I give it a 5 out of 10. It is 7.9, and it is uh, number 21 on BGG. And yeah, I think 5 out of 10 is what I would give it. And this is Nemesis. And the reason why is because I think the game is actually okay, but then the player elimination early just has to dock at at least one point just because it could you could go off feeling good or you can go off feeling really bad uh, early in the game even, and then you're stuck there while everybody else gets to play it and you have to sit there and watch. It's like Risk or something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just that usually doesn't happen, I guess, to be fair. But because it happened to me, I'm going to be a little bit more salty, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I I just don't see why people like it so much. And it's extremely expensive because it's, I think, around a $100 mm-hmm. game. And then, like, every expansion and other versions of it, there's so much. If you like Aliens and you like Ameritrash games, then maybe. Um, but that's my number one most overrated game of all time is Nemesis. I don't even know if you said it beginning. Maybe you did. Said Maybe I stopped paying beginning? attention. What? <laughs> when you said my number one. Oh, I don't know. Well, he said it now. But yeah, number one most <laughs> overrated game. And people did bash me in the comments for this. People agreed too, though. So it was like half and half. You guys can let us know oh, what boy. your 15, if you want to do 15, most overrated games are in the comments or just your most overrated game let us know if we were wrong or right who's closer to being right me or janella uh remember she said wingspan but uh (laughs) that's all i gotta say about that anyway we'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching bye guys bye